And you are welcome again. It is still the run-up. Uh, we promised you that we'll be bringing you an advocate who, you know, is an advocate for health rights of women and youth initiative and emerging organization passionate about alleviating the issues of young people. I'm not going to do all that introduction. I'm going to let Emmanuel tell us about himself. You're welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Uche. How are you doing today? I'm great. Good How to are see you? you? You're looking good. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, uh, let us start off, you know, with the background of your organization. What are you guys about and, you know, how long have you been doing this? All right, thank you so much, um, Plus TV Africa, for having me here. Um, my name is Emmanuel Ettem, and um, I manage um, the, the um, organization Advocates for Health of Rights of Women and Youth Initiative. Um, I mean, the organization is focused on, you know, alleviating the issues of young people you know, which focuses more on women and, you know, youth. And um, at Advocates for um, Health and Rights of Women and Youth Initiative, we are passionate because um, the issues of gender-based violence has become, you know, something that, you know, borders on the society and the economy as a whole. You know, there are various effects of gender-based violence across the mm. world. And you see that, you know, this affects women more. You know, one in three women is, you know, is sexually abused, you know, at a certain point in their life. That's what the statistics says. And for us, we're passionate about, you know, creating awareness and, you know, advocating against these issues in the workplace, you know, generally in the society, you know, how men should treat women better, give them more, you're smiling now, you know. <laughs> give them more opportunities you know mm -hmm. i mean be kinder basically that's that's what we are trying to do you know you know just make the world a better place we believe that if we empower women more give them access to the tools that can make them better train them educate them mm -hmm. you know give them better opportunities that will have a better society trust me all right today is the international day for the alleviation of violence against women and of course obviously that's what we have you in the studio yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, let, let's look at it you, you know a lot of times conversations crop up on the social media mm -hmm. and people are like men also go through violence why is nobody talking about it you know I am an advocate for do not hit anybody though do not you know show any form of violence yeah, against any human mm -hmm. uh, male or female Meal, but uh, there has apparently there hasn't been a lot of uh, don't get me wrong there has been actually but I feel like a lot of people do not yet understand the reason these conversations um, go on mm -hmm. in the first place mm -hmm. so what what is your take about the orientation of boys you know towards staying nice like you said or kinder mm -hmm. to the female gender so the thing is I mean we are not saying that men, men are not don't experience gender-based violence, mm. but I, I would say that you know because you know every, the society is, expects that a man should you know be the man you know so most men that go through gender-based violence issues they suppress it, they kind of because you know they they look stronger you know they kind of suppress that and try to push that away you know go through life and all of that, but then men still go through gender-based violence but the effects that gender-based violence has is is worse on women right because the effect is uncountable and you know the international day for the elimination of you know violence against women you know this year focuses on unite it says okay let's unite everybody government is doing their part, their CSOs, their um, civil society organizations, they are doing their part to create this awareness and do all of that. But what can we do within our communities to come together? What do you do when you see somebody victimizing a woman? Mm. Do you keep quiet? Do you say, oh, she's not my sister, she's not my mother, she's not my auntie, you look the other way? No. So UNITE is saying everybody within the community, we need to come together, speak up. Mm. When you see, because the truth is not everybody that is bold enough to speak up. So when you see somebody victimizing somebody, somebody body shaming somebody, somebody um, beating a woman or something, whether male or female, you need to speak up for that person because the truth is that person may not have the ability at that time to speak up. You know, so, I mean, there are various ways we can support these conversations and keep mm. pushing it forward, yeah. All right, so um, the conversations when it starts is usually about how, uh, you know, you're trying to uh, give orientation to your boys, like don't be nice to your sister, it starts from the home, mm -hmm. and, and that's, you know, building up to the question I'm about to ask. Uh, how do, 
like at what point or what causes this? I mean, Ibu Ronyala, you're not a mad person. You don't just get up and start beating up somebody or being agree. aggressive. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what, what brings, you know, uh, people to this point where they're aggressive? What causes it? Or, or if I'm to just ask it in a straight up question, what are the root causes of violence so, against women? Mm -hmm. So very great question. You know, the thing is, everybody you know, the kind of life we live, you know, from our background, from our home, mm. the home is, you know, the home front is, is the basic foundation, even beyond what we learn in school, everything we learn, we, we start from our home. What does our father do to our mom? What does our mom do to our father, our elder brothers, our elder sisters? You know, you, you observe this thing, you know, I have, I have a, 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 a less than two year old daughter mm. that, you know, I noticed that, you know, for the past two years, you know, I just, I just get to find out that the mannerisms, you know, when, when I see her, I see myself. Because she just, you know, she does certain things like me. And he tells me that, hey, you need to respect what you do in front of this girl. You understand? So these are the, the places, this, you know, these things come from where you need to be careful what you do in front of your children because they are watching. Mm. If, if you're a man and you always beat your wife, trust me, there is... 80% chances that your son would do the same to his or wife or girlfriend. You know, so the foundation, you know, if the foundation of the uh, thing is destroyed, then, you know, mm. you can't really get anything out of it. So it's important even from the home front. And, you know, beyond that, it's okay for you as a father or as a mother to talk to your children about these things. Hey, be nice to a woman, be kinder. Mm. Okay, can you lend a helping hand? If you see someone needing in need of help, what can you do to help? educate them you know mm. before we now come to the society because if you don't lay that foundation it's very difficult for them you know to even listen to people outside because hey my father doesn't tell me my mother doesn't tell me mm -hmm. you know so the foundation is very important so when you see people doing all of this is actually from the home front which is very important so we need to that's why the education we are doing in our in our organization is to educate even families educate you know young people in schools we have programs where we go to schools to educate young people across secondary schools in lagos state you know we go to different churches we create awareness we talk about these issues and you'll be shocked because People actually go through gender-based violence and they are not even aware. Mm -hmm. You understand? There are people that go through these things and they are not aware. Why you keep talking about it? Because some people think, okay, maybe that's how the man loves. Any man that, you know, wakes up in the, every time the man sees you, he spanks you. You need to understand red flags. Even when you're dating a man, what are the things this man would do that you might be pointing to? Okay, this man might be an aggressive person in two, three, four years' time. Because these signs are always there, but, you know, we tend to love is blind. wallow in the love, <laughs> you know, shenanigans. And, you know, we don't see this thing. But it's important that you mm. observe. You read. The internet is available for us to educate us, you know. And, I mean, there are a lot of organizations out there that are doing things to support women. Plug into it and take advantage advantage of that. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, how do you think this, you know, violence and not being nice to women has affected women? And what's your word to those people that would say we've been through us and we came out nice? Trust me, nobody came out nice. Mm. I've worked with over um, over fifty people that have gone through various forms of gender-based violence. You know, the, the effects of gender-based violence cannot be overemphasized. You have women that have gone through abuse drugs because of the trauma that comes with abuse, either sexual abuse, domestic abuse, you know, either trafficking, you know, or different forms of other kind of abuses, you know. Mm. So people come to abuse drugs. Now, somebody's already going through gender-based psychological <coughs> issue that affects them, you know, and they now get to use drugs. So you know that it extends from you know, the psychological effects of the abuse they had to them abusing drugs and they'll either end up in rehab and rehabilitation is expensive. Mm. And the truth is, um, you also have other effects where maybe people, are, people become unproductive. You know, they become very unproductive at work. They are not able, you know, to live their life 100% because of these issues of gender-based violence, you know. Then their health conditions, because most rape cases you, you see, nobody gets the time to say, okay, let me use a condom, mm. you know. So there are also health problems that come with it, STIs or STDs that, you know, people may have HIV or other sexually transmitted infections or diseases, you know. So the effect of gender-based violence is so long really so that's why we are we are putting our foot down to say hey let's end this let's come together let's unite let's speak up let's get help when we need to you know don't think that you are going through this by yourself there mm -hmm. are different avenues where you can actually get help for yourself yeah okay 
taking it up from where you just stopped, different avenues to get help. You've been in advocacy for a very long time. Uh, you've been doing this fight against gender-based violence for, uh, you know, quite a significant oh, yeah. amount of time. Oh, yeah. uh, what is the significance of this initiative for you? So for me, right, I am very passionate. Like, if you see me talk, right, mm. you would be like, okay, maybe, maybe <laughs> this guy has, you know, I mean, if the kind of work that we do, when you hear the stories that women go through, young people, mm. you know, maybe you're trying to get a job, somebody would tell you, oh, I need to get down with you, you know, we need to have sex before. And even when you do, they don't even give you the opportunity, you know, so all of these issues, I mean, there are various issues that, that people go through, either a, a man that is battering a wife or a, a wife that is battering, battering a man, husband, you know. Yeah. So, I mean, there are various issues. So for us, we are very passionate. We are like, no, we can have a better society. Things are not meant to be this way, you know. I mean, so for us at Advocates for Health and Rights of Women and Youth Initiative, we put our foot down, we provide care for people counseling support, you know, and I mean, for people that need, you know, rehabilitation centers where they can get help for maybe um, sexual abuse or trafficking issues. We have other organizations that we partner with where we have safe houses across Lagos that we put women in these places for them to get the help that they need, you know, for themselves. Because the truth is there's some, there, there's, a, there's an extent of abuse that people go through that you may need to do therapy for about 12 months mm -hmm. or, or so on to come out of it. Even after then, you need to follow up and all of that so we provide all of this for people to you know to get a better life and it's, it's a lot of work actually if you ask me and i know even in lagos state lagos state government as well you know they, they provide support as well they have the domestic violence unit where people also get um help you know in, in one form or the other so my own is we are, we are just passionate like okay people should don't keep quiet about these things if somebody abuses you touches you wrongly you know make it, it makes any advance in any way whatsoever either online physically you know don't keep quiet tell your friend tell someone talk about it you know because sometimes we feel ashamed about mm. these things was it my fault was it because i was wearing a short dress was it because of my hair was it because of this is not your fault nobody has a right to abuse you sexually emotionally physically or in any way that you think is your fault no is that is the fault of that person right it's never anybody's fault It's the fault of that person so because most times people that are victims would always say okay it was my fault never mm. it's never your fault for anybody to abuse It's the fault of the person and you don't have any issue the issue is always with the person that abuses people yeah all right, that's a very passionate one, actually. Okay, so uh, what, what, what would you say uh, are the things that you would want to see put in place? For example, you do this, you're doing it at an individual level with your organization, yeah. you know, like an NGO. Yeah, we're an NGO. And uh, right? how do you think the, the government or the society or individuals out there, you know, can join and make your work easier? So, so the thing is, most times, you know, just like I was saying earlier, people go through these um, gender-based violence mm. issues, and when when they're talking to people, people will tell you it's your fault, or you, maybe you were you went out at night, mm. or you wore the wrong dress. Why didn't you wear a jean under so that when they are trying to access, come on, like we we need to first of all attack the abuser, not the person that was abused, right? You attack the abuser first. And, you know, the law should be very strong in a way that anybody that abuses anybody, you can't go scot-free. I know that even in Lagos State, you know, if you report any case of abuse, you know, to the government, the person can never go scot-free. You understand? So we need stronger laws like that across Lagos, across Nigeria, you know, um, where people take immediate action, 24 hours, emergency services that, you know, that would be there once you call, people are, people respond quickly, you know, and that is, I mean, the theme for this year is unite. So that's one of the ways we can also unite and mm. fight gender-based violence issues in our country, you know, provide support, um, educational support, care, um, empowerment for women and girls that go through all of these issues in mm. our society, yeah. Uh, today is, of course, the day mapped out for alleviating, uh, eliminating, the violence, sorry, yeah. the violence against women. Uh, your organization is a, is a big one in this game. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you people have any activities mapped out for today? Oh, yes. So for this week, um, there are various activities because it's not just today. It's a 16-day activism. That's what the UN oh. maps it out. But it starts from today, you know. And f during these 16 days, everybody's encouraged 
you know, to do any program that would create awareness, just like what you're doing here in Plus TV International, well done, you know, creating awareness about these issues, advocating about this, this you know, gender-based violence issues in our society. So for us in our organization, on Sunday, we, are, we, are, we have an Instagram live session where, we, because we believe we have a lot of young people online. Mm -hmm. How do we reach these young people is through the internet. So we have an Instagram live session that, you know, talks about red flags, you know, just like I said earlier, you know, when people, people just feel, okay, that guy raises his voice at me. It's okay. Mm. That's him. That's how he is. You know, you don't know that those are red flags, you know. There are certain things you see that you need to probe more to know, okay, is this guy like this? Would I be comfortable to be with this guy in the next two, three, four years? You know, if somebody, you know, every little thing, he slaps you and you see that's his love language, and then you're going, <laughs> <laughs> then you're going somewhere love else. Love language, so indeed. We, you know, we need to, you know, create this awareness, you know, talk mm. about these issues and how can we unite. So on Sunday by 4 p.m. on our social media page, Advocates Near You, we'll be having an Instagram live session where we have, you know, people in the sector come together to talk about these issues. And moving forward, we also have content on our social medias to help people create that awareness, you know, and, you know, keep making, speaking up and advocating for, you know, the vulnerable in our society. Okay, quickly, because we're rounding up now. Say somebody's abused and, you know, they're willing to get help. Mm -hmm. uh, because you mentioned how that people should be open to getting help. Yeah. If I am willing to get help, but I don't know where to to go to can you give us you know some oh, places yeah. that oh yeah so i mean you can call us you mm -hmm. know zero eight zero three six one zero one triple eight you want to take that slowly oh yeah <laughs> you can call us zero eight zero three six one zero one triple eight okay. that's one eight 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 you can write us at us at advocates you know for global change at gmail.com you know you can reach out to us on our social media on our dms instagram twitter facebook advocates near you you know, send us a message and we'll take it up from there, really. Because the truth is, sometimes people may not really know these channels, how they can mm. channel their complaints. And sometimes people don't even, they are not even bold enough. But you don't even need to, I mean, and another thing is, you don't even need to be the one reporting the abuse. Anybody that sees any sign, that sometimes you see children, right? A child that was very lively. All of a sudden, you see the child. Every time the child sees you, mm. the child will put their face down. You need to probe that child. There's something going on. Either that child is abused or they, is on the verge of, you know. But most times, people can't speak up. So you don't even need to be the person that is abused. You know, when you see these signs, you speak up. Send us a DM. Send us a WhatsApp. Send us a message. And we'll take it up from there. I wish we can continue having this conversation. Uh, but quickly, let me ask you one uh, final question. Because you just mentioned... Uh, how that you know a child could see you that's actually up leading up to my next question mm -hmm. what are the signs you would see and you would f know or feel like okay this person is probably in need of help or is being abused so when you when you when you notice that you saw someone before the person is always very lively the person smiles at you and suddenly for a period of time the person every time you see the person the person will be timid want to be alone lock themselves up in the room you know you, those are the signs you need to Speak with them, okay, do you need help? You know, how can I help you? You know, let, let them trust you to be able to open up to you. Mm. There are various signs. I mean, if you saw someone, the person liked wearing lively colors, all of a sudden you see the person wearing black, always <laughs> the person, yes, you know. I like to wear black. <laughs> no, what, the thing is, if you like to wear black, of people know understand. that yes. that is your, I like to be wearing black as well, you know. So, but then if you, if, if you're somebody that you were wearing lively colors, all of a sudden, for a period of time, you start wearing black color, dark colors. I need to ask you, what's going on? Can we talk? Mm -hmm. You know, how can I be of help to you? You know, we need to just, you know, probe and, you know, just speak up, really. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Emmanuel Etim. It was nice having you on the run-up yeah, this morning. So and keep up the good work. Uh, it is still the run-up. Uh, the next uh, section will be coming up very soon after this quick break. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us.